Thursday, August 24, 2017. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thirty minutes. No, I think Aaron's still finishing them up. All right, Mr. Pete. Okay. You should see uh, a letter from the Ohio History Connection going through there. Uh, I'm not sure who's uh, starting this, but uh, there's a request for downtown Sandusky Commercial Historic District. Um, Downtown Sandusky Historical District? Yes. Uh, got us listed for a uh, location 247 Columbus Ave and 100 West Market Street, which is essentially the office building in the parking garage. Um, they're having a meeting on uh, September 20th at 10 o'clock down in Columbus. If you guys are interested in going, anyone here? Um, just a couple of notes that they, they put on here. You know, that if the property is listed in certain federal investment tax credits for rehabilitation, other provisions may apply. So I've got a feeling maybe the new uh, city location down there may have something to do with that. Um, but it doesn't mean that any limitations will be placed on our property if it is indeed listed. So, um, just so you guys are aware of that. I'll tell you that we had a, uh, <clears throat> we've been, we've had uh, some uh, strategic planning meetings with, regarding our health insurance plan, and yesterday we had a meeting with the cost containment committee, and the recommendations were uh, given to that group. Uh, so next week we're gonna, Nancy and I are gonna present what that, uh, what those recommendations were, just, just so you know, I mean, the highlights are basically is because the fund is doing so well. There's going to be no change in the, in the premiums, either the employees or the employer, you know, employer for next year. That's pretty much the highlight. There's a few other things, but we can go. We'll go over that next week with you, just so you know. So, if I could interrupt, just because it's I'm here, uh -huh. Cordview System upgrades, Rob Delameter, Judge Delameter. Right. Uh, is the, that the same with the? The other judges' court view. So I'm not sure I understand. This is a, a lot of it's got to do with e-filing, right? So, do, but uh, if we spend this grant-funded eighty-five thousand dollars, does that fix all the court view e-filing stuff, or just his court? That's just his piece. So which begs then, why does he need upgraded, and the other ones don't? Well, uh, we've, we've already got e-filing in place everywhere else. I know, but this isn't e-filing. This is upgrades to e-filing. That's what this says. Oh, it's my understanding that's what this was about, was getting e-filing in place for... No, it definitely says upgrades to Courtview Case Management System, leading well, I think that's what the upgrades are for. I can probably give you just a little insight into that is the e-filing system that's in place now that was put in a couple of years ago uh, the clerk's office has been having issues with that probably not unknown and there's been a lot of meetings over that mm -hmm. and so that um, there's negotiations going on with court view which has been providing that's that here. other system yeah for years and court view is able to now also do e-filing so there's negotiations going on with uh, Court view is going to provide e-filing now or soon for domestic relations or family court and criminal court. And then there's also some discussions on whether they could also do civil, which is not the only one that's getting e-filing now through the other company. <coughs> and uh, so I'm going to guess that the Judge Delameter's court is probably part of the upgrade where they're going to start being able to do e-filing where there is no e-filing at this time. 
So you don't think Judge Delameter's court does e-filing? They have not done e-filing up till now. Only the civil courts have had e-filing. But court view is putting in e-filing that's going to cover criminal and family and domestic and so forth. That's being implemented. So you think that's what this 85,000 is? That'd be my guess. They have not had e-filing. Everything's still been on paper outside of the civil courts. But court view is able to provide that service. So this is actually new. On that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I got it. Two different companies are, are able See, to provide that's e what you See if that's what you're talking about. Just you seem to know more than we do. You want to send that to him when you're done? <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, you know, just for the sake of time, I believe. Uh, I believe Karen is up next. Um, if you look at the agenda, there was a solid waste board meeting that's going to be canceled. I, so I've got another item to cover. That I'll discuss at that time. Okay. Okay. That it? Yeah, that's it for now. I got Pete. I have a question. You know, we had a, several complaints about out at the meadows with the TV people not being able. Did we settle that with Buckeye? No. What's what's the problem? The the problem is the it's not Buckeye where the server comes in. It's <coughs> our wires going to the repeaters to make it work throughout the system. This isn't exactly their problem. We've had this issue before, if you remember back, when we had the cable caper. Uh, they signed a new contract, and we've, everything's been fine up until now. Yeah, but I, I think what you're, what you're going to find <coughs> is that um, there's something between where it connects in that one room and then there's like some sort of repeater system that goes through the building. Not sure how that works. Yeah, I, I would, um, you know, who would give you the answer in one second is either the maintenance guy's there now or Craig because he knew about it too. They've been having trouble. Well, our maintenance that. guys oh, have well. checked it out because I told Laura, I said, let's make sure that it's not on our side. Yes. And well, I understand it's not because things were working fine. They had a problem. Buckeye came out, thought they had it fixed on um, like a Friday, and come Saturday, back to the same old problem where there were, essentially there's some special channels that we're paying extra for. We're not getting <clears throat> the baseball, baseball, and a couple others, I, I guess. But they're getting the other channels. Yeah. Oh, the other channels are working. Yeah. Oh, then it's not the wires. It's not. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's. I think. I think what happened is and that's why I told Lori. Did we she's pay still the bill. To figure out, yeah, we paid the bill. I think what's <laughs> happened is that. Uh, again, you know, they can reset stuff down there in their offices on their computers, and I think they reset the wrong thing. Well, that most of that stuff comes out of Toledo. You know, when they reset that stuff, that's why. Well, I don't I mean, know if it comes out of. The, I don't know where it comes out of. But just you call down there because I mean I have issues at home and. That's what I talk to or yeah, folks yeah, here in Sandusky. Yeah, the people that you're talking to are really in Toledo, and they're the ones that are um, resetting. Yeah, I mean, they so are or not. It sounds like they're have they sitting said in front of computers, and <clears throat> they go, because they're like, try this now, or try ah. this. And I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing, yeah. So they're still working on it? As far as I know, yeah. Think about it. Right. Lori, I talked to Lori <coughs> last night, and she just says, at least right now, they're not getting many complaints. Okay. Hey, speaking of the nursing home, you know, we, we still got a half a million dollars in that sunset sales tax, and we more or less committed to use that to fix up the nursing home, and I think we owe it to the citizens, the senior citizens out there to get that money going, and I'm not sure what the holdup is, why we're still holding that in abeyance. Well, I think the holdup, we don't have the million dollars, right? That got spent. Well, um, we had allocated. I want to say it was in the neighborhood of seven, seven hundred fifty thousand. No, 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 no. We don't have that. Nine hundred and some thousand well, with the parking lot. That's when we all met back there. And and if you guys go back, go back to the original amount of money. Mm -hmm. What we were going to put in there was a million five. 
on the original estimate for the sales tax. It was like a million five or two million bucks. I think it was seven hundred thousand, Pat, is what you're looking at. But no, that's we have a half a million dollars in there right now, which would take care of that other unit that Lori has come out here several times and asked us to fix up and also along with the uh, front of the building, the entrance of the building, which it, you got over half a million dollars that actually that sunset sales tax was put on and we told the citizens in Erie County that we were going to use that to fix up that nursing home. And we owe it to the citizens, the senior citizens that are out there. Well then I think what we should do first is let's figure out what the original amount of money that was budgeted when we did what we promised the citizens back when we did the sunset sales tax increase. So let's go back to the history and find out what that amount of money was because that was the budget it took to do it right. Now I think we got how much left? About 550, somewhere in that range. And 550 we'll, would fix up that front that we, you know, that the, the administrator out there is asking to I fix know what up. Lori wants to, she got wants the to other finish that last she, cluster is what she wants. She wants yeah. cluster one, but we also need to do the remodeling through the offices and the physical therapy because that gets us the enhanced, you know, the reimbursement rate for the people to, to uh, stay and um, um, Medicare rate, mm -hmm. the two and a half times reimbursement. But I think what we need to do is the original budget, that's what we need to look at because that was to do it right. And then what we should do is this board is we need to figure out, you know, what happened to our X number of dollars, where to go, mm -hmm. what we spend it on. And then if we, we should then look at, can we come up with the difference in the money between what we originally budgeted, which we, we had an estimate from an architect, did you remember? And then if we're five or six hundred thousand dollars short, where are we going to get that money? Well, I'm not sure what that has to do with fixing up the front and fixing up that other cluster, but you go you get the figure, whatever figures you need. Well you only got five hundred thousand left. We got five hundred thousand that'd fix up the front entrance and fix up that other cluster that she was talking about. Yeah, that, no, that won't even come close, Bill. I think that's your it, that's your estimate, Pat. Well, no, we have Why architect. Why we go out and get an estimate and find out where we are? We, we committed that money, you know, when we uh, put that sales tax on, and it's been sitting there for a year. Yeah, we have a. If you if you go back and look, we have an estimate from the architect that we hired to do this. So all we have to do is next week pull that estimate out, and let's see what it is. It's a, that, I, I want to get something done too, but I think we just need to figure out where to come up with more money to do it. The correct you also, way. Uh, you're also sitting with almost a million dollars. We carried over a million eight in last year's budget. There was a million eight that was carried over. How no. much do we have in the in the? Uh, it wasn't a million eight carried over. No, no, it wasn't. How much? A how much do we carry over? Two years we? ago, I think it might have been. Yeah. Last year was close to a million. That we didn't carry it over. We reallocated to other funds. Yeah, we didn't carry anything. You put what five hundred thousand in the rainy day fund? No, no. T I think two hundred and fifty. I think two hundred and fifty. Right. That's a long way from a million. And about. <clears throat> I think if you take a look. At I mean, I go back there and was, look there was there was pretty close. Maybe it was a million six. I may have been off by a couple hundred thousand, but we carried over well over a million dollars. No, we didn't. Not last year. No, we was, didn't. It was closer to a million. The year before it was higher. And last we didn't carry about a million. And again, we didn't carry it over. We, we didn't we carry it over. Reallocated. Put it into well, we, right. What, what do we, we have in the uh, maintenance facility capital fund? Uh, together with what we put in last year, we've got. Probably around nine hundred thousand. It's sitting there. Yeah. I'm not sitting there. It's for capital projects. Well, you got a capital improvement fund that you could use for the nursing home, along with the five hundred thousand that's sitting out there. I think the, the uh, I think the where it stalled was wasn't there certain commissioners that were talking about selling the nursing home? That's where we kind of stopped on this. Well, since we're going to keep the nursing home, I think we ought to fix it up. For the people who are living there, especially. Yeah, I mean, we were talking just so you know, I got a call yesterday. Selling the nursing home? I've heard that. A firm in New York wanted to know if we were still interested in selling it. Okay. Mr. Shenago? Yes, sir. On this uh, e filing system and so forth from the juvenile court, that is what it is. It's a, the court view case management system is in place now. That's what's used to. That system is how you look up all the things that are filed in the court. And this is an upgrade to that for the juvenile court for e-filing, which is instead of the lawyers having to bring all the paperwork into the 
they file electronically. Same as the other Which is how civil, right, how civil's been doing it for the last couple of years. And e-citation, e-pay, that's, again, it's a way of sending out the cases. It's just the, the, the uh, thing, same thing that's being upgraded in uh, the family yeah, court the one. and the criminal court through court view. This is the juvenile part of that. Okay. All right. We digress. You Go ahead. Well, just as a possible other insight to that, with juvenile, with um, Judge Delmater's court, the majority of filings are juvenile, and those are confidential, so they had to have a, a slightly different system to protect information that would be available through the civil or the domestic relations. Hmm. Okay. Well, we didn't know you were going to have any people coming up, did you? No. <laughs> I'll uh, kind of go through this very quickly. You've got the information in front of you. Um, children's services, I'll leave that in case you want to ask uh, questions of Angel. Family and workforce, you've got some figures there on uh, what the, st the statistics were for this two-month period. And uh, Ohio means jobs, being pretty static as far as jobs available in the area. A um, little concerned about the Moochie Farm project. Child support, uh, we have some changes there, new, em new employees coming in. Um, one employee who's been with the county for 37 years is retiring next week. Uh, fiscal, we have um, the bids in, as you know, for the net transportation contracts. We're reviewing those. Some of them had to be uh, sent back for failing to uh, meet the requirements. And uh, then we talked about the post-adoption special services subsidy committee. Uh, Greg Steltner has come in as the new fiscal supervisor. We're having some changes uh, with, in OMJ with everything going from WIA to WIOA, and I've given you the uh, information on what those acronyms stand for. And also they're cutting back on follow-up services for adults and dislocated workers and focusing on youth. Uh, labor and management, we had the active killer training on July 19th, which was very successful, and since Greg is here, he gets a lot of credit for that. In fact, I want to give my hand, he did a great job, he did a great job. And uh, we've revised quite a few job descriptions to accommodate the new people that are coming in. The union contract was finalized and we're awaiting uh, the actual final copies. Okay, questions? What you said, why are you concerned about Moochie Farms? But because before you say that, he's not here because you're expecting trouble or from these people? <laughs> well, we heard that you guys were in danger, possibly. That's what I'm and, wondering. Yeah. Did we do something we're wrong? Feeling, we're feeling safe. We're feeling safe, but we had him come in for you guys. Come over here. <laughs> Moochie Farms? Yeah, why why'd you say that? Well, you know, we were given to believe that these jobs are going to be for Erie County people. But um, we have heard, as we've contacted, to try and find out more about what we need to do to get ready for their possible hiring that they're potentially putting in for an H-2A, which means they want only established agricultural workers and will take ones that are not um, native to the United States. So basically it means they can bring in Mexicans and uh, from people from Mexico and people from the, primarily the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I, I think you might have some, a little bit of inaccuracies. I think what they told us originally was they want to hire, you know, locals because they're a 12-month operation, which is different than what an H-2A can actually do. Mm -hmm. H-2A can only be there, what, eight, you know, depending on the contract length, eight or nine months. Correct. So that provides a, a problem for them. You know, to, to be able to do that, they'll use those just like Cedar Point or Kalahari or anybody else does when they bring in forces. But but their first preference, what Mr. Mucci told me, was that they would love to be able to hire locals. Uh, we came up with the thought of maybe using the BGSU Fireland students who are there anyway mm -hmm. uh, to be able to work short shifts, like three, four hour shifts and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they looked at seniors, but you know their concern is where are they going to get that many people to do this type of work? 
Right, they're looking for agricultural workers. Yeah. I, and, and I'd love to be able to tell you who to reach out to, but I, I, don't, I don't know. We're, we're having issues on how to get the sewer pipe there that nobody will get back with us, so. Yeah, we're, you know, we're just getting this from the local um, representatives for the um, migrant workers, that they, Muji has reached out to them, so. I would have somebody talk to Abby, because she seems to have, you know, his mm -hmm. ear. Well, I think Casey has, is, if she hasn't already, we'll be talking to Abby. Casey yeah, Needle. I think that's, because I mean, I, you know, at this point, there's not a whole lot we know, other than they're put a lot of steel up in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, certainly we want to see as many Erie County uh, residents employed there as possible. We, they don't have the power there yet, so mm -hmm. I'll get it. Okay. Did you have any questions about anything else? How's our uh, children's boarding number? I didn't see where you had that. What, where, where are we at right now? Okay, I'll let Angel answer that. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We are looking pretty steady in the world of the boarding bill. What I can tell you is some of our high dollar children, we have been able to reduce that piece, but we are also uh, filing more emergencies as we speak to more children in the community. The positive to that is we were able to certify additional foster parents. <laughs> we had one of the largest classes that we've had in the time I've been there. And in addition to that, we have additional foster parents who are signed up for the fall classes. So more kids can stay local. More of our older kids that were in a higher level of care have been able to come home. But we do still have the struggle with about seven children who are very expensive to the boarding bill but require a higher level of care. Mm -hmm. So those children are in residential at this point. But we've reduced that number, though. We I think, weren't you at like 12 or something like that? Yes. That were the real expensive ones? Yeah, we were actually at 15. 15 was and okay. now we're at seven kids that we're targeting and looking at. So that is looking very good. We also have included the Mental Health and Recovery Board. We have individuals that are meeting on a regular basis to continue to look at ways that we can reduce that and become innovative in looking at Medicaid and how we you know, tap into those resources as well. So just uh, for the because you're here, might as well hear this. We've been working with like Judge Delameter and now Judge Tone, and we've been trying to figure out, you know, we got this millions of dollars that's going out in boarding, and it seems like that's a, a pot of money that where's the cog in the wheel? So it's, a lot of it is in the courts, we, we found out, was, you know, the public defender, there's the one lady, Mary, or something that's there only half a time, because she splits between here and there. And so a lot of times they can't get the schedule to get the case processed. So we found these cases that some of them are gone for years. And, you know, forget about that. It, it, you know, it's a money thing, it is. But what about that poor kid that's being stuck, you know, bouncing around? And so we think that we need money to hire the lawyer people, the, whether it be a public defender. I think the prosecutor was fine, right? I mean, as far as that. Maybe. But then the, the other one was the to get the court-appointed lawyer, which I didn't understand. You know, if a kid goes in, he may have a mom, a dad, he may have a grandparent, he may have, and there might be four kids with three different fathers that all get lawyers. So we got to hire the lawyer, and if we don't have a lawyer because we don't pay enough, then the case goes, stops. So we're, I think the judges are really... I think they're really conscious about this and they're trying to say how can we move these cases along faster and if the cases move along faster it's good for the child obviously but it's going to save us money you know because we won't have these boarding costs and you know and then we're going to try and do the the inpatient treatment system because that's what we keep hearing from you know Ziggy and you know all the judge guys is what do I do with these people you know we send them to jail it's just like a revolving door they send them to jail so they don't die. You know, we could release them to the street, but then they'll just overdose and die. Most of our drug people. So we don't have a way to fix this. And we think that, you know, Erie, little Erie County is ultimately gonna be one of the leaders for small counties in the state, because we'll have detox, we'll have inpatient, we'll have sober living, and, and we're gonna have this for men too, if we can strike a deal with Lorain County to take 30 of our men up there. 
So all of a sudden you'll have the tools to maybe help these people get clean and maybe get back to productive lives and bring their children back, which is, I'm sure, ultimately all of your goals, you know, but you can't put that kid back with a mom that's a heroin addict. So, you know, but, you know, it's not fair to put mom, you know, arrest her for a petty crime. You've heard about the F5, you know, that thing now that they're not going to send them to prison. But it's not fair to just dump her into our jail, you know, which you, you've seen over there, all these, these 30, 40, 50 women in there. And they're not getting any help. They're just there. And then they come back out, and they go do back the same thing. And it's like I've always said is that, you know, it's really hard to have somebody stay clean when they have no house, they have no car, they have no job. They're in the same situation they were when they went into jail, and they go right back to the same people that caused the problems and get them high, and, and now they die. So so I think we're, I think we're very close, right? Things are moving. But I appreciate you sitting down with Judge Dallin Matter and working through some of these problems because we would we would never be aware of the flow. You know, yeah. you guys do the the flow and we, we're not aware of that. So I think uh, Judge Dallin Matter and, and Angel are having some really positive conversations and trying to help us as we look at the money because that's what we're looking at and bringing that down. So I appreciate the time that you you and Karen have spent uh, working with him and doing working on that and appreciate all the work that everybody in the room does to help everybody to help so many kids that really kids and families who really need your services so we appreciate it Thank yeah you. I, I was gonna say the same thing I said wow what you guys do is incredible you know to to be able to do that and you know what a what a worthy life's goal is to you know to be able to help these folks if they can get you know, back to reality, you know, and and they tell me the stories, you know, whether it's the sheriff or the, you know, angel, I was like, wow, I mean, you know, it's, we don't want to say we're insulated, but we're certainly not in the trenches like you guys are, and we, you know, thanks for what you guys do, I mean, it's really something. And behind me is many of the team members of our investigation unit, so those are the individuals that go out when we get that initial call or concern, so we are so happy to have the team we have and I don't think that we could do the work that we do or keep as many kids in our community or preserved in their families if it wasn't for our team back here yeah so I'm Thank very you. happy we also have a team going to a meeting in Columbus at the Supreme Court with the judge and myself and the prosecutor's office to talk about case flow and that's coming up in early September so we're hopeful that we'll also get some additional ideas and suggestions on how we can continue to make that process better okay wonderful well I am standing before you because we have two individuals that we would like to recognize <coughs> and the state of Ohio has recognized for their outstanding work and first would be Rebecca Diekman she has been with the agency for, stand up Rebecca, for over 11 years. She has been our primary forensic interviewer and she's taken cases that have went to grand jury, have went beyond, and truly is amazing in the work she does. You'll never hear a complaint from her families, professionals around her. Uh, she does wonderful work and she was recognized by the state of Ohio for that and received a certificate of honorable mention. So we wanted to bring her before you we also have a certificate. Come on up. Oh. <laughs> and I don't, Jamie, do you have them with you by chance, those certificates? <laughs> well, thank you. And we appreciate everything you do. I know your family's here as well. Yeah, so. uh, they surprised me. So I was like, why is my husband here? <laughs> what we told her is she's taken the lead in Erie County for human trafficking. So she has educated many individuals talking about what we need to do here in Erie County, that it's not something that doesn't happen here. So we told her today that she would be giving you a brief presentation on that. So she was unaware that her name was going to appear up there and she was going to get this recognition. Well, let's hear the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you came all this way. <laughs> I mean, here's what I'll tell you. Honestly, with human trafficking, I think it's something that we are just in our county starting to realize happens here. I think we have such a high tourism yeah. rate that um, 
we've really, really addressed the forensic interviewing and the sexual assault and having Michael's house. Um, and what we're seeing is an influx of young girls who are being transported from Lorraine or from Cleveland or from Toledo. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of cases that we prosecuted, I mean, even 10 years ago when I was here, that really could have been prosecuted as human trafficking and under the law. Um, and so what we're doing as an agency is just trying to get everybody trained. Um, we're working with the prosecutor to start looking at maybe prosecuting some of those cases that are more than just sexual assault, um, that are actually, you know, girls who are being trafficked by their parents or by uncles or by, you know, friends of the family and actually holding them accountable for the federal standard instead of just our state standard. So that's the point. Are the girls all drug related issues in most cases? Surprisingly, no? no. I mean, some of them, yes, once they get kind of into that lifestyle. Um, a lot of the girls that I'm meeting, because um, what's great is because everyone's trained, we're identifying victims. So we're actually finding victims in Erie County. So the great thing is that we're finding a lot of very young girls. So we're talking early junior high, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, who unfortunately have ran into some older boys, 18, 19, 20, 21, um, who are kind of preying on um, a family history of trauma usually is a pretty consistent um, thing that we're seeing. So family history of trauma, history of being involved with us, um, and then usually some minor juvenile delinquency stuff that's kind of starting that initial where you're going into diversion. Um, a lot of family history of drug abuse, but not specifically with the victims. I think we just have girls who have kind of grown up in some chaos, and I think that there's some older boys who want to give them some stability, and unfortunately then what happens is they take advantage of that um, and put the girls on the street. Um, we're seeing a lot of girls who are traded for alcohol, traded for drugs. Um, we've had a couple girls, unfortunately, who their parents have provided them to other people um, for drugs or alcohol. And so um, back in the day, when I first started 12 years ago, we would just prosecute that as a sexual assault case. And we have done that. Those people are in jail for 25 years. Um, but fortunately, with the new uh, forensic or with the new human trafficking state laws, those mandated uh, minimum sentences are much higher. So if we start prosecuting under those laws instead of just the sexual assault laws, some of those people would be in jail for much longer. So that's our focus going forward, I guess, in the next probably five, 10 years. Well, thanks for your hard work. Thanks for letting me actually talk. That was my <laughs> The next individual I want to recognize is AJ Will. AJ, come on up here. AJ has been with the agency for over 10 years. He's exceptional, his communication skills are wonderful, and his proud parents are right here in the audience who's raised a wonderful young man. Um, he was St. Mary's. He, yes, he's a St. Mary's graduate and a Kent State graduate. Uh, he has done wonderful work, and he leads a wonderful team. He was one of the primary leaders that was able to get Michael's house so that way they were accredited this year. And I will tell you, he's the go-to person. Everyone knows AJ's name. He knows his cell phone. They know their cell phone number to get a hold of AJ. And he has done wonderful things for Erie County. So I am so fortunate to have him as part of our team. And he's wonderful to work with every day. So thank you, AJ. Thank you. And I know the state has recognized you and really wanted to, you to know that uh, what you do is exceptional and they have actually tried to recruit him to do some training as well and take him away but we won't let him go <laughs> thank you just real quick um, my unit i think is important to um, they do the work michelle schultz she's an investigator in the agency so we stand up michelle these people deserve the credit um, yeah amanda cecil amanda turner emmy <laughs> clyburn Marissa Lindsley just started at the agency. I'm forgetting somebody. Obviously, you're Rebecca. I was. I thought I was coming here today for Rebecca. Um, <laughs> never in a million years. I'm sorry if this took away from you, Rebecca. You deserve this. Thanks to my parents and my wife as well. Um, but thank you guys for everything. And I know your wife wanted to be here, but it's her first day starting at school, so she was disappointed she couldn't be here with the girls. We have great leadership here, so thank you guys for everything you do for us. Yeah, thank you for what you do, AJ. And stay standing, because there's another piece that Christ's going to speak about. Um, You're going to arrest him? No. <laughs> Not today. Uh, for you guys that don't know me, Greg Hall, I've worked at the Sheriff's Office for 17 years now. Um, I'm assigned down to Job and Family Services as their um, 4D deputy. What that is is basically with the ch child support aspect of it, but it's not just child support. It involves, you know, children's services, income maintenance, the whole building down there as I deal with all these different fires all the time. Um, but being in law enforcement for 17 years and 
getting put down there or me voluntarily go down there, it's, it has really opened my eyes. You know, I've been on the road, I've you know been supervised, I've been doing all these crazy things all these years, but really not the child aspect of it. Yeah. You know, we get an unruly kid, we take him to DH. We don't have that contact. And with AJ um, being a point person, I've learned a lot and it helped better my career with all these people back here. Um, and it, it's just one of those things where, you know, I ended up nominating AJ through the AG's office for this award. Um, you know, we had all these letters of recommendations and stuff like that. Um, but this, this guy here, he, he is a true uh, leader. Um, and he's, just, he's helped my career out personally as well. It's opened my eyes up. So now when I read reports from other deputies, I'm calling them and say, hey, if there's a child in there, better get the report over to these guys now. So, and that has influenced the difference in cases as well. But I want to thank you too for Sorry, everything. I appreciate it. Thank you. Here's my dream job, so thanks for letting me do it. No, thank right, you. Thank you. Thank you, for sure. Well, hey guys, we have some uh, copies of your certificates at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to come up and grab a picture? <laughs> Sure, that there? would be wonderful. Yep. I could get some pictures of all of you. Carolyn makes sure things flow through meetings, so <laughs> we're, uh, we're good. They got, they got people taking pictures, I think. You have pictures? You have people taking pictures? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> There was a, a bit of miscommunication. I thought that Jamie gave him to Karen, Karen gave him back to Jamie, and they were in my office, and who knew? So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll do individual. How's that? Perfect. Wonderful. AJ? Is everybody okay with me posting this on our Facebook? We could post it on the county's website also if you'd like. Wonderful. Just make sure that somehow I get a picture. Okay. Got it. Thank you. A certificate. Yeah. Do, do you want a picture? Picture of everybody's certificate. Yeah. Oh, I like your camera, Mr. Monaghan. That's a nice one. <laughs> Rebecca's <laughs> nap, baby. <laughs> Smile. Oh, that's good. One more. Oh, good. And then one more. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you Don't worry, I'll get you the real ones. <laughs> you guys don't have to leave. Oh yeah. But we have solid waste coming up. <laughs> the airport reports coming up. And the airport report, yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Stan, you can't hold an audience, buddy. I was going to say, top that. Yeah. Tough, tough after follow. <laughs> yeah. We got runway lights and things. That's true. All right. AWOS. So we're going from a heroin problem to a runway light problem. Seems pretty easy to solve to me. <laughs> Everything I have pales in comparison to uh, the previous segment. There's no no question about that. Very, very blessed in our counties to have these kind of people working with the monumental issues we're dealing with. We're very blessed. Okay, well, I think I've got all good news. You're in the black. Very close. One of the um, organizations, online organizations we deal with for pilots in airports um, is AirNav. 
a lot of pilots research where they're going <coughs> through the uh, various websites supporting aviation. And one of those sites uh, lists comments. So for your further perusal at some later time, uh, Air Nav, uh, I just printed off the comments. We've only a few from this year, several from last year, but um, just to give you an idea of the flavor, uh, we've only had one negative over the last several years, and that was not the airport directly, but a car rental deal that didn't come out the way the pilot thought it should have over a cancellation and a, and a fee for an automobile that he actually never actually was able to utilize. So, and we've dealt with the, uh, worked with the car dealer, rental car agency uh, to resolve any of those kind of issues happening ag again in the future. And to date, we've, we've had no further issues. Uh, good news, met with the customs folks yesterday, and of course we had the grand opening some time ago, and we've been anxiously awaiting to <coughs> remove the temporary trailer, open the building, the facility, and we got the word yesterday the hard opening will be next Thursday or Friday. Uh, their equipment has finally arrived, and they're in the process of getting it ready to, to hook up in the building. That's all good news. Um, we had those few pieces of equipment that they weren't happy with the first time around. All that's been resolved. All the additional signage they needed has been resolved. And I cannot wait to see the trailer go and the front door be unlocked at this facility. Uh, we've had numerous calls, uh, lots of traffic the last several weeks, uh, primarily from our Canadian friends, but all good news. Um, and all positive feedback from our Canadian friends. You guys bought that trailer, right? No. Oh. We lease it. Ah. Yep. Okay. About 500, well, all total electric bill and so forth. It's over $600 a month that'll be going to the black. That's good. I uh, can't wait to see it go. Uh, other good news, um, the airport authority appreciates the two counties two sets of commissioners uh, helping us out with the AWOS with the loan to get the new AWOS equipment on the airport, which was desperately needed. I don't know if you recall, a couple weeks ago, we had a fairly intense thunderstorm with lots of lightning, and our AWOS, the old AWOS, was struck by lightning. And we have $90,000 coverage. I've talked to the insurer, and they, I was forthright with them and said, you know, we have a new system ordered. We realize this system cannot be repaired, and the agent, the um, claims adjuster expressed to me that it's insured. If it can't be fixed, we're going to pay the full amount. So if that all transpires, full amount. the $90,000 coverage on the old system. So our, our loan from the two counties will be short-lived. Um, nice. As soon as the new system's installed, we should receive uh, insurance payment for 90000 for the coverage that we've had on that equipment for a number of years. Uh, they have pushed back the delivery date. It was supposed to be here by now. They've had some issues with uh, equipment or their supplies for building the equipment. We're looking at another two or three weeks before the equipment arrives. The installer uh, discussed with him yesterday the timetable and he is going to check with the carrier, and the day that it's to arrive, he's going to be here dismantling the old equipment, getting ready to start with the new. So I think once it gets shipped, things will move very quickly. And another scenario, uh, uh, the weather has been good the last couple of weeks since lightning str has had struck the unit, so we are without an AWOS completely and to date it has not adversely affected traffic to any measurable amount. So a blessing there for us as well. Please mark on your calendars. Uh, this is just a preliminary notice. You know we do the uh, retreat we have for the last couple of years. We're going to have another retreat this year on September 20th. Again, we'll be going to Middle Bass. This is just a preliminary, just to give you something to lay on your calendar so as not to forget. This retreat has uh, more significance than the last two in regards to with a new master plan 
being developed for the airport in the very early stages. Uh, in reading through the FAA's requirement for a master plan, it is going to take significant involvement from not only the airport authority, but also from U6 commissioners. So uh, if you can possibly make it, or at least one representative from the commissioners of each county make it, it would be very helpful because uh, the 10 year plan, let me back up. The FAA is uh, taking a much harder look at their 10 year plans. And what they're finding is the airports that had a solid 10 year plan, follow the plan, things work out well. If the 10 year plan was not followed or was not thought through, their feeling is that there have been significant wasting of, of tax dollars in, through the grant process. So the 10 year plan, as we design it, will determine the direction the grant funding goes for this airport. So I think we have um, a great foundation laid, but we're at a crossroads. Uh, talking to the customs folks yesterday, they asked me if we'd received any calls yet from any freight carriers. And I said, no, we haven't yet. And he said, well, there have been a couple inquiries at the uh, regional office about could they bring significant freight into this airport. So we're going to involve the economic development people from, from both counties in the uh, retreat this year. I think that's essential because we have a golden opportunity with this customs facility to attract um, potentially some freight carriers. One that was brought up specifically was for produce that we're ideally located for produce being flown in from uh, north and south, which I had never thought of as being a, a viable option uh, for the airport. But um, this, this could be the kind of thing that takes a very positive situation and turns it into a grand slam for the two counties. So uh, could mean more jobs, more revenue for the airport, and uh, the snowball, positive snowball effect from there. So please save the date if at all possible. Uh, upcoming, let's see, September 20th, the day of the retreat, um, will be the start of the Tuskegee Airmen Red Tail Traveling Exhibit. It will be back again at our airport for the uh, fourth, uh, fifth time, actually. This will be the fifth year, be here through the 23rd. If you haven't taken the time to stop by, see the exhibit, it's, it's well worth the half an hour or an hour. And of course, Dr. Brown will be on hand as well, and we'll be autographing his recently released book about his life and all his stories from World War II, which if you haven't been privy to any of them or have not obtained a copy of the book, it's, it's some amazing stories of what a young man went through um, as a pilot in, in World War II. The stories are incredible. What a great guy Harold Brown is, Dr. Brown. Absolute I mean, great guy. and Great and a, shaper. I mean, I think, what is he, 92 now? Yeah. 92? yeah. Great supporter of the airport. He's been very pro-airport from the, my very begin, first time I met him. Just uh, unbelievable gentleman. Also coming up in October, and there'll be more coming up out about this, October 21st will be the Autumn Wine Fest. Um, the Muse Liberty Aviation Museum did this last year. It was successful. They're going to do it again this year at the uh, Aviation Museum. And that's pretty much for the next couple of months, along with the Chile, annual Chile fly-in will be October 14th. I don't have a flyer for yet, for that Maybe yet. Chile. You again? Yep. <laughs> we'll be over. We make 55 gallons in a cast iron cauldron, so yep, come on over. We're getting a little lazy though. We've been buying the cornbread. We're not making that much cornbread anymore. Here is uh, last month's July's uh, activity report. Just a couple things to note. July was, was a record month for us in terms of total volume. Um, the activity at the airport, general aviation-wise, is, I believe, about maxed out. We're, we're about where we're at 
there are only so many airplanes in the surrounding areas. Um, we're, we've been very, very consistent over the last year, year and a half, with the number of general aviation aircraft that visit the airport. On the jet side, however, we're seeing continued <coughs> growth, and I believe on the jet side we have only scratched the surface. Um, I believe once the customs word gets out that we have the international capability that we're easy entry, easy departure, easy clearing, that we will continue to grow more and more uh, in the jet side of things. Talking to as many jet pilots as I can, especially ones that are unfamiliar faces, they all say, wow, we didn't even know about this airport until I was talking to so-and-so who flies for so-and-so, and he was telling me he cleared here, and, and it was easy, and that there's a diner on the field, and it's a beautiful place. So that word is just now getting going. And uh, once the facility opens, the heart of the new build, heart opening of the new building, um, I think it's going to just um, really take off from there. And the proof is in the fuel sales. Uh, we're up about 24% this year in the jet sales. Low lead's about flat. In fact, we're even off a little bit at the moment. Uh, we can account for that. We're really flat. The uh, bit that we're off, less than a couple of percent, is uh, attributable to uh, mild winter and, and no island traffic. And also the Cirrus group that um, flies eight Cirri aircraft into the airport training Air Force flight surgeons. They're now giving their flight surgeons um, flight training so they understand what a pilot goes through in combat or in, on a mission. They uh, typically came into the airport about 16 times or 20 times a summer and every time they come in they take several hundred gallon of fuel because they come. We take them to Monami. While they're on their dinner break we fuel all the aircraft. They come back and load up on our popcorn for the flight home and off they go. So they've had fewer missions this year uh, so that's the tributes. Does Lake Erie Shores and Islands give you any press throughout? I mean, do they, when they send their advertising, and they send it out all over the, I shouldn't say all over the country, but they're a pretty good sized area. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Bill. It, it's, um, the sales representative came around a couple of weeks ago with, and I can't remember what it's called, uh, and it's about Lake Erie's, it's everything that's in the area, a nice little booklet that you can advertise <laughs> in. Yeah, we, we're very familiar with that booklet. And, and I said, you know, and they wanted us to buy an ad. And I said, you know, we're funded with tax dollars. We're, we're a public airport. We should be part of the, the equation, not buying advertising. We're, number one, we really can't afford it. But I, I want to sit down with uh, Larry and discuss. There's an opportunity for, the, for them to make us. We're no different than being on Lake I don't Lake think Erie anybody Shore. on this board would disagree with you because what you're doing is you're bringing tourists into the area. Correct. That's what, that's what we're funding Lake Erie Shores and Islands for, to bring tourists into the area. And we're part of that picture. And I, I really believe that um, they can capitalize on what the airport has to offer in their efforts to attract more people. So yes, I'm gonna sit down with Larry and see if we can't more or less become a partner with them in all that. Yeah, I, I think it'll I work. I think you'd get help from all this board with that. I mean, that only makes sense because your people are bringing people into this area for that airport. And I was surprised that, I, you know, I have a buddy that has a, a jet and, you know, they didn't know about the airport of Port Clinton. I said, come on. <laughs> it's amazing how many people don't yeah. know. Yeah. It is. Uh, we did add uh, another jet. Uh, based at our airport. It has not arrived yet. It's currently getting some new electronics, but we expect it here in the next couple of weeks. So that will, will bring us, uh, I think, now to six or seven turbo-driven aircraft that are commercial use in nature, and um, a couple more that we're working on. So every time we add a jet like that, it, it adds at least six to eight thousand dollars to our bottom line uh, if they do any any amount of flying so um, the more of those the merrier 
And I took heed to what you had discussed uh, last quarterly report regarding financials. I have the Appling and Associate financials that tell the whole story with everything involved, but I, I did a little, as my grandpa used to call it, barn door accounting, and uh, put together a simplified version. I am working on a bit more formal, simplified version of of accounting that kind of takes out all the capital projects and and keeps things uh, more on a simplified basis and they haven't done it yet though they have not got anything totally nailed down well you're pretty close to even and what what i wanted to share was just a comparison January through July 2012 versus 2017 just to take a look at a period of time and and look at the the primary areas uh, fuel sales were up 86 percent ramp landing fees were up 30 and 46 percent total sales were up about 94 percent our payroll expenses are up 42 percent We've added a couple people. We use um, some interns for summer, additional summer help. We've basically increased our revenue by 94% and only added a person and a half. Operating supplies, uh, it, we're showing a 46% reduction, but that year could have been one where we had some extra stuff. So, Timing, yeah. It's in the ballpark. One that's notable is the bank processing fees. Although we've almost doubled our business, we've only increased the bank processing fees by 19%. And that, that's a, a big number for us uh, if we don't keep an eye on it. And we've done that by cash promotions, promoting Phillips 66 cards, because if they use a Phillips 66 card, there are no transaction fees. Phillips takes care of those. Uh, and also by the based aircraft accounts even though we run the risk of some of those folks being a little slow in paying, we save on average two and three quarters percent for every dollar they spend at the airport. Uh, and I think it's important that we continue to monitor that, but also try to keep our bank processing fees at a minimum. Operating expenses were up about 32 percent over the last five years. Total expense were up 47 percent, with the bulk of that being in the increased uh, payroll expenses. Bottom line for 2017, I can't compare to 2012 because if you recall, in those years we were on a cash basis and there were a lot of cost of goods, fuel invoices that were never included until they were paid. So it doesn't give you a, an exact comparison, but for the year without the $30,000 support money from the two counties, we're right now at about break even just three, four thousand dollars negative and with that money obviously we're, we're ahead of the game and August will be a record month for us no question we had our largest uh, transaction from the bank last week of uh, the average is about sixteen seventeen thousand dollars in the summer for uh, bank clearing money for the credit cards and last week it was thirty two thousand so it's been busy we went through uh, 8,000 gallons of jet fuel last week. We had a load come Monday, and by Friday, we were pushing empty again. You have a lot of people come through here, through your airport, that people never know about. I saw where Usher was out there with his jet. Yeah, LeBron was in, in with him, and, and again, we didn't get a picture of, with LeBron, but we did get a picture with Usher. Usher was, uh, you know, I don't follow that type of music really that close, you know, it's more for the younger folks. Mr. But King, he's a big fan. I thought it was Mr. Olds. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me tell you, he impressed everybody at the airport. A very down-to-earth gentleman, spoke highly of the service, appraised us for the service, and said, wow, what a beautiful area. Had no idea this was here. This place is really neat. I'm coming back. So that, that was very impressive, and he's on our... You know, we don't have the celebrity wall anymore. Well, now we have the celebrity TV. He'll be on the celebrity TV by the, by the end of the week. But um, very nice, very nice young man. Very impressive. That's all I have. Well, Stan, 
you know, I know we went through a lot of turmoil to get the Griffins over there and get get this whole uh, situation, but I, but you know, you're you're really the guy that's put your heart and soul into this. I know I've told you this before, and kind of it's a thankless job sometimes, I'm sure, but I know you, you spent a lot of time there. And, you know, your numbers are showing that. I mean, you guys went from, you know, losing money to, you, you told us, give me a few years and, and I'll, I'll put this back in the black, and, and you did it. So thank you for what you've done. I know, you know, the salary isn't maybe what you, you could make in other places, but your heart is, is right, and it, it, just, it just shows. I think Mr. King would probably so, say the so same. Stan can do everything. Stan's not only a pilot, so he understands that portion of it, but he can fix the equipment when it goes down. And then in the middle of the night, when they're shorthanded, he's out there plowing snow at 2 yeah. o'clock in the morning. And then he gets up and he goes back to work, you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. Right. So, eight and or nine. He, he's obviously got the budgeting side down as well. He can do everything. Right. Yeah, I, I, I've recognized that for years, Stan. I've told you this from here many, many times over the battles. And, you know, you were right. You know, the, the secret is more planes, more fuel. That's that's the whole thing. And, you know, you've picked up the revenue. You know, I think the Griffin addition was just huge because now you can fix the stuff there too, which is what you told us back then. Is So, you know, I think it worked out great for everybody and just keep up the good work. and. We're here to support you. Well, thank, thank you very much. Since, since Pat brought up the Griffins, <clears throat> I see where they owe us about 160,000. 130,000 is. Yeah. Do. Yeah. What What kind of plans do they have of getting that thing up to date? They uh, We met with Tim King and Dave Foster and Tom and Thomas uh, about six weeks ago. No, Eight. I don't think it was quite that. Maybe a month a ago. A month ago. <clears throat> and discussed with them where they're at and how how we're going to get this back to zero again and we we have put a plan together they are making weekly payments as agreed and extra and they will have their extra what they lost the engine that they had to pay for twice paid off in early 2018 and at that point they'll be able to wipe out that 90-day balance in a matter of three or four months. Looked like it was gaining instead of losing. It was there for a while. <clears throat> yeah, we're we're right now at 149,000 total, with 60,400 in the 90-day column. So it, it's been a struggle. And the sad part is, as we've all discussed, wow, they had it current, and then this happened. But they've been very busy. Well, as long as they got a plan, that's what yeah. it's all about. They, they are paying every week. Uh, Dave and and Tim are. We'll be meeting again in the next couple of weeks. Yeah and trying to keep us in the forefront of uh, the checks they write. But they've, they've been busy, the shop's been busy. You know, a, a couple years ago, we were all very nervous and concerned about it, no one more than I. And this time around, I see they're doing a lot of things right that they weren't necessarily doing all the things right before, and, and they're gonna make it. They're gonna make it. Well, when you take a look at the airport from what it was, 10 or 12 years ago and what it is today it's like a while so thank you for all you do well, I want to thank you folks for all your support you know we've uh, as Pat expressed we've had our rough spots but out of all issues like that come good things if if yep. wise people keep their heads and work through it and we did and we're all hopefully can continue to re reap the rewards from this airport for years to come well, Thank we you. put our best man on your board, so. Dave Foster. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, Mr. King. You know, and that's another thing. The airport authority is uh, now a well-oiled machine of gentlemen, since we are all gentlemen on the <coughs> airport authority at this Save time. One. Save one. Right. With varying backgrounds, experience, and talk about a group that works together, finds different angles, uh, it's so refreshing. It used to be when the board meeting week came, I didn't sleep. Now, I look forward to the board meeting because we all learn something. We all, we all figure out a way around an issue or, or find a new look at something. It's, uh, we have a very strong group of folks on that board. And 
Tim, you've done a great job. Thanks for serving on here. I appreciate the announcement. Okay. Thank you, guys. So, the salad waste is canceled? Yes. Okay. Did you? Well, let's Thank do you. access bench choices for running back. Yeah. Is that okay? Why don't you do that? Okay. Do, we'll do we need what? a motion to recess into access management. So moved. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Okay. Is that you, Eric? Okay. Oh, sorry. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, this is our typical kind of small driveway variance we keep seeing cropping up. And uh, I've been talking to Carolyn a little bit about whether we might have some changes to the regulations in store for the next big meeting in May, maybe to try to smooth some of these out so these sort of routine ones yeah. we can speed up or maybe almost administratively uh, decide. But um, the gentleman is, as is typical, limited by the frontage he has. He wants to put a barn in and put a driveway back to it, so we don't see any issues with it at all. We have no objections to it, so. Okay. No, any objections? I should have, okay. I should have a resolution there for you, Mr. Monaghan. Okay. <clears throat> resolution, the Erie County Access Management Board of Appeals for the purpose of granting the variance request of James A. Jevons, Jr. Second. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion to reconvene? So moved. Second. Hey, Mr. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Is that it? That's right. Do you have something else? I have a few things left. Okay. Did you want something, Mary? No, I just. Did you get a hold of Mr. Kraft? I come for the access management. No, I haven't. Just haven't He's our work. alternate. That's oh. oh. Well, you did a great job in your alternate function. Yeah, keep up the good work. Thanks. Thanks for that. All right. Okay. Uh, just so you know, I got a request, and again, speaking of, you know, as Moochie Farms was brought up a little bit earlier, I got a request from the city of Huron that they're Again, I think you guys are aware of what the project is. That they're yeah, we are. We, that eventually, that's going to get annexed, okay, by the city. Yeah. Um, that hasn't happened yet. They're expecting to be somewhat operational before that happens. So uh, they're going to need access to water. So the city's going to send us a draft of us giving them authorization to provide that. Okay. So you know it's coming. Um, the other item I have is um, Gary Will and I uh, got a hold of me and said, hey, we've got a, a couple of lighting projects he'd like to do, and there's some uh, rebate money available from uh, First Energy for these. Um, the one is over at the uh, jail in the Sally Port. Um, the total cost of that, well, what we're looking to do is, is, to, is retrofitting the lighting for, from incandescent to LED. Okay. Uh, it's $1,640 to do the jail sally port. They could get a 35% rebate of $576 for that. Um, How many lights is it? Do you know? Uh, let's see. Yes, I do. Uh, 32. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and have the... The energy savings is how much? Oh, uh, let's see. would be per year $575. No brainer. Uh, 1.85 1 1 year payback on that. No brainer. Uh, again, I had them, uh, had our facilities folks verify the electrical rate they used to uh, come up with these calculations. It was actually done by Wolf Brothers. They got the right utility rate, so I was, I said, okay, so that sounds good. So okay. You can manipulate to make it look worse or better if you wanted to. Um, the other one is down at the uh, parking garage. That actually is a hundred and 
117 units placed down there. Um, that cost is 18,844. 18, we could get a 53% rebate of 9,075 on that. Got a 1.1 year payback. Uh, the savings would be um, $977 a month or almost uh, or 11,727 per year. Do it, right? We're just I'm gonna have to figure out you know where to take the money. I may have to take out of that capital improvements yeah. fund, but we'll get the rebate back and stick it in there. Okay. Um, so we're we're good to go with this. I had Gary go check other suppliers. This was the lowest he could find. So why did he only choose those two? Are there not more places that are eligible or? I think Wolf is doing this. They're they got a sales guy that's out promoting this, and they work with First Energy. I don't buy from Wolf, but I think they're the ones pushing it. Yeah, they are. I think, oh, and I think it's for certain situations. It's not just your regular indoor lighting. It's yeah. for stuff kind of like yeah, that. It's not a light bulb I can buy at Menards because it's in sodium halides, and it's I know there's a conversion thing that goes in there or something. Yeah, everybody's doing it. Yeah, yeah and, and our guys are going to do the work. So. If there's any conversions on the fixtures and that type of thing. So. All right, I'll tell them to go ahead. I mean, the cutoff is the end of this month. At least getting, getting it, getting it submitted to Ohio Edison, and uh, I guess they can. Even though they're getting kind of slammed, they said they can turn it around. So get done by the end of next week. Okay. So eventually, you're going to see some kind of budget adjustment for this. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Resolutions. Motion to award the bid to Morton Salt. Second. Mr. Monahan. Yes. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Shenago. Yes. Um, if you agree, please cancel the following meetings, Monday, September 4th, 11th, 18th, and 25th. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Um, resolution of the board to approving the public official bond of the county treasurer of Erie County. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, resolution Board of County Commissioners uh, for the installing schedule of payments for water tap fees servicing the property located at 9609 State Route 99 Monroeville, tax ID number 290015.016. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not a business need signature. Resolution Board of County Commissioners declaring certain equipment surplus in order to be sold at the end of that auction. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Uh, authorizing the county auditor to make budget modifications. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Um, Conferring an agreement between the Erie County Sheriff and Bowling Green State University. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Um, authorizing the drawing of warrants payments amount due upon contract order. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Authorizing the county auditor to make interfund transfers. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Authorizing payment to Lucas County Coroner for service provided to the coroner. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? <coughs> yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Authorizing county auditor to make supplemental appropriations. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Uh, resolution of the board commissioners for fire for Erie County designating depositories for active and or inactive public funds. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? 
Yes. Mr. Shenegal. Yes. Authorize the county auditor to make interfund transfers. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Resolution of the board of uh, Erie County regarding annual ditch maintenance assessments upon benefited property owners. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Um, establishing an installment schedule of payments for water fees, tap fees, servicing the property located at uh, 10201 Berlin Road, Berlin Heights. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yeah. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Is that your house? No. <laughs> Around the corner. <laughs> <clears throat> Authorize the county auditor to make supplemental appropriations. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Um, resolution of the county commissioner of the purpose of entering into a lease agreement with Natural Resource Conservation Service. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenikov? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenikov? Yes. Hey, Pete, on the sales tax, when does that usually come out? Is it like the middle of the month? Yeah. It's, it's, it's 